The Israelite Nation Worldwide Ministries presents Friday Night Bible Study. Our Friday Night Bible Studies are held in the United Kingdom, Atlanta, Georgia, St. Louis, Missouri, and in the state of New Jersey. Welcome to Friday Night Bible Study. Peace, peace, and peace, and welcome to another segment of Friday Night Live with the UK branch and the Israelite Nation Worldwide Ministries. Now, before I get into the topic and before I introduce what the topic of discussion will be today or this evening, um, I'm going to introduce my panelists. So first and foremost, thank you guys for joining. It means a lot to me. Um, I feel like I always ask you guys, but I'm very, very thankful for you guys taking time out of your, your busy days and, and joining me on this panel. Um, so to my right, there is Elder Kwame. Say peace to the guys, Elder Kwame. Peace, everyone. Um, peace. Really happy to be part of this topic today. I'm very excited about it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> and next to Elder Kwame, we have Maria. Say hi to the to the people, Auntie Maria. Peace, everyone. Peace, 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 peace. Okay, so the topic of discussion today, um, I'll give a little bit of a backstory. I feel as though whenever I do give these lessons, and you know what, funny enough, um, one of the qualities that I, I, I feel like I, I possess um, when trying to figure out what to talk about or when to, what to speak about, um, I guess, regarding the time that we're in, we'll be spoken about in the lesson today. But around this time specifically, um, you know, we, we've we just had our blowing of trumpets. We've just had uh, our atonement and we've just had our, our tabernacles. And we know what this, what, I guess, the month of Ephraim is gearing us up for, right? This is when we, we as Israelites, we as the children of Israel, we as the children of the creator of the, the, the heavens and the earth, we have to prepare ourselves for... I guess the times that are coming that come every year let's have it right they come every year and I'm not going to say that they're super powerful and I'm not going to give them their flowers but what I will say is they have their ways and you know temptation is very rife um and it's down for us as Israelites down for us as the children of the God of Abraham the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob to gear ourselves up to be able to I guess fight that battle to the best of our abilities right um so we're thinking about, I guess, the topics and stuff like that. And I found myself specifically during the tabernacles, whenever I did pray, I always prayed for, you know, us understanding why we're here and understanding, I guess, the intentions in which we are doing the things that we do. So in like the, the, I guess the intentions that we have when we keep the atonement or when we have the tabernacles or anything like that. So with that being said, the topic today is... Well, I guess the title of the lesson is called The Intentionality of the Israelite, right? We want to really explore the intentions that we as Israelites must have in mind or what's, must have in our hearts whenever we keep um, anything, whenever we keep the law, statutes, and the commandments, whenever we keep these feasts, whenever we keep the services unto the Most High God, whenever we do anything and walk in the ways that our Father, um, I guess, permits for us to do or permits for us to walk in, we need to understand the intentions in which we are doing these things. And with intentions comes... I guess understanding right you can't i guess you can't really do things with intentions without the understanding um but you need to have both is essentially what i'm trying to say right you need to have both understanding and good intentions right and good intentions in the eyes of the god of israel by the way not good intentions in your own minds right because that's super important um okay so i'm going to go into the scriptures right so we're going to turn our bibles to proverbs chapter 16 and we're going to read from verse 3. I have it right there for you guys, right? So Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3. And you know what? Before we get to the scriptures, and I know it's super early, but we're going to do it now anyway. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. Um, give it to all the people you know. You know, share the links. Do what you can because we are all, as Israelites, we are all, I guess, we have the job to spread the word of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob across the four corners of the earth. And we can't just, we can't just do it. Um, by just teaching you guys on YouTube or giving these lessons. We have to have you guys help us in spreading these links and spreading the pages and making sure that our words are being heard by everybody on this globe, right? So let's go. Proverbs chapter 16 from verse 3. And it states, Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. I believe that's Priest Ricardo's favorite scripture, or one of his favorite scriptures. But we'll read it again. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. So I have a question for Maria and Elder Kwame, right? And anybody in the comments, if you guys want to, you know, answer the question, if you guys want to give your thoughts, please do so. 
Um, but the question is, to commit your your works unto the Lord, what does that actually mean? Okay. So firstly, I want to just say before I finish, when I sort of discovered we were going to talk about this topic, I was really excited about this topic because it's, 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 it's the type of topic that is, I feel that sometimes it's being mis, it's misunderstood, right? Mm. Um, because, you know, people can, with that understanding, there could be gray areas in this topic. So I'm so glad that we brought this topic up and then we're going to really go into this topic because I think with the full understanding of what your intentions are, um, you can really apply yourself. But when, when, when going back to what you said, um, commit thy works um, to the Lord and the rest basically will follow. It's, and basically, um, firstly, it's basically just, um, it's, it's basically understanding really, when you think about it, right? is understanding what your role is as an Israelite. Um, you, you have to understand what you're doing before you actually apply yourself. And, and I think if you fully understand um, what you're, you're doing, then your intentions are very clear in what you're doing because you understand the reason why you're doing what you're doing. So you're able to apply yourself. You understand what I'm saying? So um, when, you, when, when I hear that word, um, um, what was the word again? So commit, commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. Commit thy works, thy thoughts. What's that? Commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall mm -hmm. be established. You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah, that, that's what I believe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Auntie Maria, anything you want to add? Yeah, I think it's a really good scripture. Um, I should say verse. It's a really good verse because it's saying it, it, it breaks it down into two components. It breaks it down into works and thoughts. Yeah. Works is an action. So when it says commit thy works, commit thy actions, commit thy doings to the Lord, you know, unto the Lord, which is which is doing what we do as an Israelite, keep the law, statutes, and commandments. Commit thy works. Do the works of the God of your Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, what is expected of you, you know, yeah. and thy thoughts, thy, thy desires, thy wants will be established. But you've got to put that first. You've got to do the works, put, commit thy works to the God of Israel first before mm. your thoughts can be, be established. So I like the way it's broken down into doing to your to your desires, to your thoughts, to what you want. You know, mm. I think that's a really yeah. good. That's a good point yeah. you made. I feel uh, uh, a good point. That's a very good point you made. Something that I really like to um, push on, and I did. I always like to push on is that. Yes, this is the creator of the heaven and the earth, but we are his children. And and I always find myself talking about the relationship between the God of Israel and his children and the understanding that, you know, the, the God of Israel tells us to do all these things, but not because he's not only because he's God, because he's not saying do these things and that's it. Do these things and I will bless you. Do these things and I will be there for you the same way that our father is there for his children. So therefore, when you say that, I know the Kwame also said it, that we need to understand why we do these things with the intentions or understand the intentions into why we do these things once we understand those things once we fully get a grasp of those things then everything else will follow right so again you separate it with works and thoughts right we do all the works we do the works that we're supposed to do, to do that is required of our father we do those works and all our thoughts shall be established everything else will follow after i think it's a very very good point you added yeah, I, I wanted to add something quickly that came to me while you was talking. And I yeah. think when we when we think of the word intentions, right? Um, and I think it's a great, it's, it's a really, really good um, way of understanding who the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is. Because when, we, when we're very intentional, there, there's a way, okay, so how I want to break this out. There's a way that we have to commit ourselves when we serve the God of Israel, when we're keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. There's a way that we have to do it, but kind of understanding like the way that we have to do it, right? And applying that are two mm. different things. Cause it's like, and I think a good example of that, that I always look upon with this topic is um, Cain and Abel. You understand? Mm. 
When you look at Cain and Abel, right? Abel was able to give his best to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? It wasn't just a situation where he was like, okay, uh, let me let me, let me me give something to the God of Israel, but he just gave it. I, um, I just said, okay, I'm going to give this to the God of Israel. But he went out his way to give the best that he could. He was intentional. You see what mm -hmm. I'm saying? That's coming from a deeper part. You know what I mean? It's not just, okay, I'm... I'm I'm just giving something. That's that's he's doing it in a way that is like it is faultless. He's he's going out his way to do it. That's you know, he means that. That's coming from his heart. He really means that because he's making all the preparation to make sure that he's giving him the best. Where yeah. with him, he just gave. Whatever yeah. was there was given, whatever it was good or bad, he just gave it. But you know what? That's, yeah, yeah. I didn't want to cut. Sorry, I didn't want to cut you off. But I think that's a great point, and it adds to something that I wanted to really make clear, right? Because Abel gave his best, Cain gave. They both had good intentions, but were their intentions good in the eyes of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? And I guess were they equal? And I guess the point I want to make is that good intentions are good intentions, right? Good intentions to you are going to be different to what good intentions are to me or to what good intentions are to Maria or what good intentions are to our older Shadrach. But ultimately, the good intentions that really matter are, are or I guess the good intentions that really matter are, are, are coming from the eyes of the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and, and the God of Jacob, essentially saying that if it's good intentions in his eyes, then that's real good intention. Right. Mm -hmm. So therefore, having good intentions as a human being on this earth. It's, it's, it's not, it doesn't make any sense because again, it's, it's, it's always going to be subjective. The same way the truth yeah. in the eyes of the world is subjective, but the truth, according to the Israelite Nation Worldwide Ministries and to the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, it's not subjective. It's not up for discussion, right? The truth is the truth and that is it, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And the same way it goes with intentions, right? The, the, if you have good intentions and the, and the good intentions are seen as good intentions by the God of Israel and according to us as the nation, Yes, that, that makes sense. That matters. But good intentions is a general statement. Good intentions in the eyes of the God of Israel, that is what matters. That's objective. That cannot be argued with or debated. That's not up for discussion, right? Yeah. Um, and I think that's a great point you made about Cain and Abel because Cain gave, although it wasn't his best, he gave, right? And you can say he had good intentions in giving, right? Because he had to still give something. Yeah. Um, Abel gave his best, right? Yeah. Hence the reason why the God of Israel loved Abel for that because he gave his best, right? And then Cain got all jealous and, and, and all of that, right? But that's the difference, right? There's there's a big difference between good intentions and I guess we can call it holy intentions. Let's just call it holy intentions for the sake of <laughs> less, less words, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. But that's a great yeah. point. That's a very good point. I gather um, there's, loads of, there's loads of things in the scriptures that talk about good intentions um as we, uh, you, you know the story about Uzo we know the story about Saul they're all done in good intentions you know but as you stated again it's doing stuff in good attention with good intentions that yeah. is not written for you to do or stated for you to do mm. is not in is not good intentions to the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob it is good intentions because you believe it's a good thing to do even though it's not for you to do it you understand what I'm saying? Like we yeah. just took, like talk about Uzo when he touched the cart um, mm -hmm. to stop the Ark of the Covenant from falling. You know, um, we we'll say that's good intentions. Um, we can also argue that it's it's, it's reactive, um, but at the same time, it would like it, it, it's one of those things that if we were found ourselves in that situation today, knowing the precious cargo that cart was holding, even though we know. It is not our place to touch it, to go near it, <laughs> you know. With that in our hearts, we know the preciousness of that item that is on that car. And, I mean, I, I, I mean, I truly believe that a lot of us would stop it from falling because we know the significance of it, but we also know the consequence that will follow it. It's true. Yeah. It's true. It's, it's very true. I mean, like, with especially with Uzai, uh -huh. it's... It's very, very, very good point. Um, and we, yeah, we can all see that Uzzah had the, the the greatest of intentions. And he saw that, um, you know, what 
what was on that card, as you said, was so precious, right? It was super, super precious. Um, and he's naturally, natural reaction, the same way if your pocket was, I mean, if your phone was going to drop from your pocket, although I'm not, I'm not by any means, by any means of my point, I'm on the same pedestal. I'm just saying, I'm trying to think about something that's precious to us as humans, right? But if your phone dropped out of your pocket, naturally, you're going to, you're going to try and catch it, right? Um, or if somebody else's phone dropped out of your pocket, you're naturally going to try and catch it out of good intentions. But there are so many unmitigated circumstances in that situation. Like, who was really allowed to touch the, the Ark of the Covenant? Who was allowed to transport it? How would that be transported? You know, there were so many things written in books before about, you know, I guess the maintenance and the upkeeping of the Ark of the Covenant. And it just felt like it, just, it was just unlike, I'm not unlike, it was just unlucky, or I guess it was just, you know, um, unfortunate that Uza fell victim to that because he had the best intentions to catch it. Or to, you know, make sure he doesn't drop or whatnot. But the, the law is the law. What's written is what's written. And he wasn't allowed to do what he was supposed to do, right? And that, again, adds another element to this in the sense of just because you have good intentions, that doesn't necessarily mean you're right, right? Yeah. It doesn't mean you're right. Um, yeah. He had the best intentions, right? It, it, imagine nothing was written about the arc and, you know, he caught it. He'd probably be held as a hero today. Um, but... <clears throat> He's not because what was written was was written. He wasn't supposed. He wasn't permitted to touch it. He wasn't permitted to do anything like that. Um, but in his heart of hearts, he just didn't want to see anything happen. Same thing happened to King Saul, as we discussed earlier. Same thing happened to King Saul, King Saul right? He had he had all the best intentions in doing what he done when he went to when he was um, you know told to go smoke the Amal Amal Amalekites or Amalekites. I always pronounce that wrong. Amalekites <laughs> somewhere over right. Um, <laughs> he had the best intentions although he was told to wipe out every living living thing he sees you know he brought back what he brought back um as an offering to the god of israel but the god of israel said well that wasn't the instruction he had great intentions but that wasn't the instruction right it mm. happens it just happens i guess it's just the nature of man you know sometimes so, we fall back on our own understanding yeah and and it kind of gives you that thingy going back to what was said commit thy works unto the lord and thy force shall mm. be established it's almost like you have to prove yourself you see what i'm saying 100%. yeah you have to prove yourself that you're capable because it's just all these examples is saying that yeah. the god of give you god of israel is giving you instructions to go and do something right yeah. how are you going to commit yourself to that you see what i'm saying and you mm. see a lot of the times our forefathers went wrong by yeah. not seriously committing themselves because can you imagine if saul had committed and did exactly what the God That's of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob yeah. had told him to do, he would still be king, right? Mm. What would have been a thing? He's, it, as it says here, commit thy works unto the Lord and thy force shall be established. That's a great point. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, you know, um, I think it come kind of goes back to what we were saying before or what was said before in terms of instructions and in terms of understanding is very, very important because obviously... If we understand what we're doing and, and we're doing it because we have a full understanding of what we're doing rather than we're doing it because we've been told to do something. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? There's a big, massive difference there. You see That is I mean? a great point. That is a great point. And I want to just add to that really, really quickly. That's a great point, right, about us having to prove ourselves. Because somebody made a good point in our Bible study on Friday or Saturday, one of the two. Um, I think it was on a Friday. I believe it was Alison. And she said... Um, you know, despite despite the God of Israel choosing the lineage through Abraham, everybody after Abraham still has to prove themselves. Like, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We're we're not just automatically saved, or we're not automatically you know sent to paradise because we fall in that lineage. We still have to prove ourselves, as as you said, right, Elder Kwame. We still have to prove ourselves. Um, that, and, and, yeah, it was just a good point you you made. It was a really good point you made. I just wanted to add that, but it's it's, it's something that we have to remember, right? We have to continue to prove ourselves. Um, and the same way it says, commit our, our works unto the Lord and our thoughts will be established. Once you do what is required of you, once you prove to the God of Israel that you're worthy of, of, of I guess, being given the, the blessings that you want, you need to work for it first, right? Um, and again, it just goes back to the, the whole father-son relationship or parent-child relationship, right? I was, unless you're a spoiled child, which we as Israelites, like, we... I wouldn't say we're spoiled, but we definitely took everything for granted. But unless you're a spoiled child, typically you have to work for what you what you get, right? And that is just that's just the way parent-child dynamics work. And that is exactly how it was with the children of Israel and with us. Um, so the children of Israel and the God of Israel. 
Yeah. You know, I would add on to that as well, because when you say commit thy works unto the Lord as well, it's yeah. it's about following the Lord's testament commandments, but it's not following it to how you perceive it to be. It's following it to how the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has written it for us to follow. There is yeah. no deviation, as, as Elder Kwame stated in the beginning about the gray areas. There is no gray areas. And as yeah. it, it ties in with what the Uz, with Uzer and and Saul, what they did, they were grey areas that what they done. It wasn't what was instructed, and that's the importance of it. When we commit our works onto the Lord, it's committing ourselves selves to what what we're supposed to do, what the God of Israel has instructed us to do, not to how we interpret it. Interpret. I know I'm saying that word incorrectly. <laughs> Enter it in our own way. Do you understand? Me? And that goes on to leaning onto our own understanding. Um, yeah. You know, it's, there's a way of how we're supposed to do things, when we're supposed to do it, how we're and 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 so forth. But if we deviate from that, then we're leaning on our own understanding. We're making, we're basically making side laws, which is incorrect. Do you understand mm -hmm. me? When we start deviating and saying, "Oh no, you know what? I know I'm not supposed to do this, this, this," because it states here, but I'm gonna. I'm just gonna just change a little bit here, change it a little. No, 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 no. That's what the, that that is when you say good intentions, when you think that you can do it better, but that's not how the God of Israel has told you to do it. Doesn't matter if it's better if you think if you think in your own mind that it's better. It makes no difference. The fact is, it's written in this way for you to do it in this way in the, following these instructions. If you don't, then it's no, it's it's not good intentions. It's not making it better. The fact is, you're not being obedient. Point mm. blank. You're not being obedient to it. So when we say commit thy works unto the Lord, it's commit everything that he's asked you to do. Mm. Everything he's asked you to do and follow is committing thy works unto the Lord, whether that be in, in performing something in your preparation, in your even in your preparations of doing the works for the Lord. That has to be, there has to be commitment. There has to be, he has to be at the forefront of the reasons and go back to your understanding and reasons why we do things that he has to be at the forefront as to why you're doing it. Mm -hmm. And you've got to do it with gladness of heart as well. Yeah. I Thanks. think, I think I wanted to just add a little something to that before we kind of move mm -hmm. on. Um, I think if I was to really kind of phrase that is um, if, um, cause we're talking about commit thy works onto the Lord. Now, to me, when I look at that, I look at it like, um committing thy works to the lord is putting the god of israel first you see what i'm saying and, mm. and, and, and like, as we've said about saul king saul right mm. he was given a specific instructions right but in his heart he thought he was doing good and mm. it goes back to what you were saying that you know is down everyone's way of good is down to interpretation my way of good could be different from your way of good and his way of good or someone else's is all down to interpretation. But when it comes to the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, Isaac and God of Jacob, right? He's given us these instructions for a reason. He is the creator, right? Mm. You cannot sit there and say, you know better. Oh no, you know what? My idea is better. No, there's a reason why he's given those instructions. You understand mm. what I'm saying? So mm. your, your, your intentions to follow those instructions is the key here rather than mm -hmm. you having to say, you know what, this is a nice thing to do. You know, a lot of people mm -hmm. say that keeping Christmas is a good thing to do because you're giving gifts to children, right? Mm -hmm. What could be bad about giving gifts to children? But <laughs> it's the intention behind it. <laughs> you know, yeah. Having yeah. that understanding to know the intention, why, why are you doing, do you know why people do what they do or why they keep the Christmas? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So um, I well, think... Putting the God of Israel first is, is to me like that's that's the key there, really. You know what I mean? Good point, good point, good point. That kind of swiftly moves us onto our next scripture, right? So we're gonna read Colossians 3, um, and we're gonna go from verse 23. And we're only gonna read the two verses, so 23 to 24, right? <clears throat> so it states, right? So bearing in mind what we've just spoken about, right? So we've spoken about you know the intentions of you know the God of the, the intentions are not really on good intentions. What's seen as good intentions are not on par with what are good intentions in the eyes of the God of Israel, right? Because that reigns supreme, right? Number one. Um, and we also spoke about the relationship between a father and his children or a, a parent and their child. 
and all these sort of things, right? So we'll read Colossians 3 and we'll start from verse 23 and we'll, we'll, we'll speak further about that, right? So it says, and whatsoever ye do, so whatever you do, do it heartily, do it with your whole heart, as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance for you serve the Lord Christ. I'll read it again. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that the Lord ye shall receive the, the reward of the, no, sorry, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance for ye shall serve, or so for ye serve the Lord Christ, right? So when, when I read the scripture, right, instantly what came to mind for me personally was, um, and I'm not throwing no shade. In fact, I'm not even going to mention who it was or what denomination of people it was, right? Because that's not, in fact, to be fair, I was going to say that's not how I am. But now that I think about it, essentially all it is is that there's loads of different denominations that probably fit the same bill, right? So I'm not going to, I'm not going to name and shame. I'm not going to name and shame at all. Um, but there are a few different denominations out there. And to be fair, when I was first thinking about it, there was only one that came to mind. But now as I'm saying the sentence, there's actually a few that come to mind. Um and they do these things, you know, like, you know, maybe pray or maybe they, I don't know, maybe they, they dress a certain way to, 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 to show the world, right? Um, or, yeah, or the other group, maybe they pray in front of the whole world, right? Now, when I, when I read, you know, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men, for me, those things came to mind purely because if you ask them, like if you ask a, 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 someone from a, don, a denomination that prays out like in the open, they will say to you, you know what, like I'm I'm not afraid to show you guys who I who I worship, right? Or, you know, I'm I'm, you know, this is just my culture. I just I'm just praying to my God. That's what they will say. Um, but is that really doing it onto the onto your God or even onto the Lord, rather than onto men, really? To me, it just says to me that the, the intentions may be pure. But they're not do it. They're doing it for, like for vanity, really. Do you know what I mean? They're doing it to show the world that they're doing that, as opposed to doing it, I guess, in the in the sincerity of their heart. If that makes sense. Yeah. And, and that's what we're being told or spoken against, right? We're not supposed to do those things. That's number one. And number two, in knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. So everything that we do, we must do with the greatest of intention everything that we do we must do to the fullest of our hearts because once we do that as i said earlier this isn't a thing where we just work to the, work for the god of israel and build his house and that's it right because you know this is a two this is a two-way transaction right we're not gonna i say we're not going to we're not being asked to just work for the god of israel and that is it and he's not gonna bless his people the same way we're not gonna um the same way he's not gonna bless us if we don't work for him, right? It's a two-way transaction. So if we do these things with our whole heart to the Lord and not just to show the world that we're doing it, the God of Israel will bless us, right? He will bless us fully, right? And that's, that's to me, that's a very, very powerful and very important thing to, to, to get, to state. And then I think another point, the last point I'm going to make before you guys, before you guys jump in, right, is... It speaks about, again, whatsoever you do, do it heartily, right? And I know there's only two verses and I'm going to keep repeating them because they're very powerful, yep. right? And whatsoever you do, do it heartily um, as to the Lord and not unto men. Now, at the Israelite nation, right? We do things, no most not we pass over and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. We do things massive, right? Um, we we really put our all into it, right? And a big shout out to like the Supreme Council and, you know, the Canadian branch because they really, really put a lot of work into making sure that time is a very, very important, a, a lovely time for everybody that travels into to headquarters to go and keep it, right? Um, but we, like, they really put on a, an extravaganza for, like, the Passover, for the Feast of Unleavened Bread, for our bib celebrations, for all of these things, right? And that is just the way of the Israelite, right? That's what we do, right? But by no means are we doing it to show men. By no means are we doing it for, for, for the world to see. We, we couldn't care less. It's for our God of for the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob to see and to smile and to be happy about because we are doing it for him. All these things that we do is for him. And when we do things like that for him, we know that based on the relationship that, the, that our father had with our forefathers, when they 
put their best forward. Whenever they showed the God of Israel how powerful he was and celebrated his name, he blessed us. And that's exactly why we do these things. We do these things for the blessings of the Most High. By no means do we care about, you know, throwing the biggest Passover celebration for Tom down the street to watch and see and enjoy. We don't care. We do it for the God of Israel. And I think that's super important and something that we have to remember, right? So our intentions are pure when we keep these services. Our intentions are pure. And we hope our Father sees it as well, as well mm -hmm. right? But our intentions are pure and we do it with understanding because as we stated earlier as well understanding and intentions have to go hand in hand right i feel like it's really hard to have i guess know the intentions in which you are doing something without its full understanding right it's really hard right super super hard so we know why we do these things we have the understanding to know why we do these things and therefore we have our like the best intentions at hand right anything you guys want to jump in and say yeah i, I wanted to say but i mean it, it kind of goes back to saying that the way that God of Israel wants us to do things or apply ourselves mm. is he wants us, like, using that word intentionally. You know, mm. we have to do this, like, we have to mean what we do. It's mm. not just being, just participating, right? Mm. Give your best, right? And it goes back to the word I was said before when I said, you have to prove yourself right mm. to be the best or you're doing it from a place because remember at the end of the day we are representing the god of abraham god of isaac and god of jacob that's who we represent so the god of israel doesn't just like when he shows his love for us he's not just doing it for the sake of doing it you see what mm. i'm saying mm. he does it because he means what he's doing right and there's meaning mm. behind it so there's a way that he wants us to behave, you know, mm. how we go about doing things, do we hard? Because, I mean, if you're in concern to your brethren, if you're dealing with your brethren or you're yeah. doing something for your brethren, you have to go out. You have to do it with, you, with, with true meaning, true heart. Like, you know, you don't hold back. You mm. see what I'm saying? Do it, you know. So I, I feel that there's a lesson here, man. You know, the God of Israel is actually teaching us it's almost like we're getting to know who he is by him telling us this is how you should do it. We we are actually representing him. Mm. You see what I'm saying? By mm. us doing exactly what he's instructed us to do, right? Where we can look upon this and say, look, there ain't no, there's no great areas here. This mm. is the way the God of Israel, he's made it very clear. This is how we should do it. Do it from your heart. Mean what you do when mm. you're doing it. You see what I'm saying? Uh -huh, so uh -huh. I think is that is very clear. That's what I'm looking at on the scriptures. I'm seeing that the God of Israel's is not only giving us instructions, but he's telling us how to go about doing it. Uh, you see what I'm saying? How to yeah. do it. You see what I'm saying? So that we don't go wrong. There's no like, oh, let's add this to it or let's no 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 no. You have to be intentional. You have to you you have to do it and mean what you do. You see, mm. so I, clear. I think it's clear, man. Very clear. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Goes back to what Maria was saying. Yeah, I was going to say, um, I do like the scripture of of um, what you just read. In whatever you do, do it heartedly. And as you've both pointed out, is that is very important because our Father doesn't give us he, when He gives us blessings. He's not going to give us half-heartedly blessings. He's not mm. going to give us anything that is half that is half done or you know what, just give it to them. A bit like the Cain and Abel. I'll just just give them that little bit rather than give them the best. Do you understand me? So why then are we not going to show that same commitment? That same um, that same yeah that same commitment to to him because he will never give us anything that's hard half-heartedly he would give it it will give us all as long as we're giving all it's as you stated before it is a transaction he gives all you give all mm. it, there is no half-hearted way of doing things and you can't be double-minded in when you're given these things you know and you mm. have to be able to give your all to him and it has to be pure from the heart as well because only when it's pure from the heart you're doing it with such a drive. When you come to the heart, you have a zeal. It's like a zeal when you do it from the heart. You have mm. a drive. You have a purpose. You have this excitement. You know, mm. when it comes from here, it, it's like it's like you have that that power boost. It's like like you know in games, you have the power boost. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, have the yeah. power boost. You know, 
Yeah. Because what it is, you get that power boost when you when you know it's coming from the heart, and you mm. feel so happy in your in yourself when you're doing it as well. That's the difference. If you don't have that happiness and that zeal and that passion and that 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 that, that yes yes <laughs> that kind of feeling, then then you know it's not from the you're not putting your all in it. Mm, mm, right. wants, because he will do the same for us. He doesn't yep. mix them. He doesn't mix around when it comes to giving us the blessings and stuff. He will give us the best. I mean, mm -hmm. he talks about the, the. I mean, it's so many times in the scriptures he has blessed Israel in numerous occasions. You know, mm -hmm. because they've done what they've done, and they've done it from the heart. They've done it because they wanted to do it. They had that zeal, that passion to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, that drive to do it. Like in the Bible study that we had on Finger when they talked about um, no on when the, I can't remember who spoke, spoke about, but Josiah and having that. That, that 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 drive to get rid of everything when he found out about the laws such as commandments you know um that that kind of like like even though he felt remorse regarding the fact that he did not know these things that passion that 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 zeal fired him to do correct do you understand me anyway i don't want to go off the topic oh, but the point, i think it's about having that passion <laughs> It's, it is about having that passion because James 1 8, and I'm you guys don't have to flip there any, or anything, right? But it's just a scripture that I have noted down, right? Somewhere, and it just come up and it says, A double minded man is unstable in, in all his ways, right? So we have to, you can't, you can't be in the middle, you can't sit on the fence, right? You need to, and especially if you want to be that person that that gets all the rewards and gets all the blessings from the God of Israel, because as you said, the God of Israel wouldn't give us half made blessings, right? He will ensure that he blesses us properly, right? But we also have to be single-minded in the sense of we have to have all of our works done in, in, the, in the entirety of our hearts or with the best intentions or with the intentions that our father sees as good, right? We cannot do things half-heartedly or part-time-ish, right? The God of Israel doesn't want part-time Israelites, right? So it's very important, very good points, very, very good points you guys made. Um, and speaking about blessings... August talents. Let's try and merge the two. So blessings and talents, right? Let's turn our Bibles to First Peter chapter four, and we're going to read from verse ten, right? So we're going to read in verse ten, right? And we're going to speak a little bit about, I guess, stewardship and the fact that we all are brought together under one idea, one principle, one on one understanding, one belief, right? Um. So let's read it from verse ten, and it says. As every man hath receiveth the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manif <clears throat> manifold grace of God. And we'll read it again. And every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. God. So the God of Israel has blessed us, right? And we're going to speak about the, the parable of the talents soon, right? But the God of Israel has blessed us all with our own <coughs> gifts, talents, skills, um, whatever synonym you want to use for that, right? It's down to us, considering it was God-given. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob chose us and also gave us these skills. Now, we're not giving these skills to hide and to put away in a corner and to dig under the ground and never use again, right? We have to use the fullest of intention. We have to use, I guess, our, our, our understanding, use the love for our God of Israel to use these skills and build his house, right? And we have to have every intention in doing so. We cannot do it, as you stated earlier, half-heartedly. We cannot do it, you know, with with without our hearts right we have to have our heart in it and we have to use these skills to the best of our abilities to help build this house as every man have received the gift every man have received a skill or a blessing from the god of abraham the god of Isaac, and the god of jacob even so minister the same one to another as good stewards because we all are here together put together under one belief and one principle as good stewards of the manifold grace of god Right. Yeah, I would like to jump in there in regards to because you when you read the scripture, you talked about stewardship and we need to break down that word steward, steward. Oh, my gosh, my way, my words, stewardship. <laughs> and when I look at the word stewardship, just to give it more context, it, it's, it's another way of supervising. It means supervising or taking care of something. Mm. So if you if you put it in the context of what we're discussing regarding gifts, if you're supervising, you've been given a gift to supervise it. 
Now, if we take it in a work context, when you're supervising somebody, you're looking after them, you're training them, you're teaching them the role, you're watching over them, making sure that they don't um, that they know all ins and outs of their role. Um, mm -hmm. If they need extra training, they get the training. And if you take it in the context of um, taking care of something, if we put it in the in the sense of of a, of a you're being given a seed, mm. and you and the God of you is giving you this seed. They say, the, and the seed is is the gift. Mm. Here's the seed. Now it's for you to take care of that one seed. That means you're going to plant it. You're going to water it. You're going to give it whatever it needs in the best environment: the water, the sunlight. Um, oxygen, whatever it needs, to make it grow. And it's the same principle when it comes to our gifts. You've been given something to take care of it. It's for you to take care of it and grow it and nurture it. It's yeah. not a matter of you just taking it, holding it, and saying, okay, I've got it. No, yeah. it's stewardship is taking care of something. So if you've been given something, it's for you to take care of it. And taking care of something means to make sure that you nurture it, help it to grow, help it mm. to sustain itself. Do you understand me? So mm. I like that word. I like how they put stewardship in there. And it's in that, in that, in that verse regarding the gifts, mm. because it's mm. so nicely because we are the supervisors of the gifts that he has given us. Right. And it's for us to grow it. Yeah, exactly. To grow it. That's exactly what I was going to say. Grow it, use it. Because I guess without using it, without growing it, you can argue that you're you've got bad intentions, really, haven't you? Because I guess, I guess, I guess, throughout this lesson, we've been using the word "good intentions" and saying that it's separate from what the intent. Like, good intentions are separate to good intentions to what the God of Israel see. But if we are true children of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, good intentions to us should be the same as what good intentions to the God of Israel are, right? So let's just—I guess we could just generalize good intentions in general. So going back to what you were saying, like, if if you don't use it, if you don't use the, the gifts, the skills, the talents that the God of Israel has given unto us, if we don't use it to, to grow it or to, to get better at it or to, I guess, use it to build the house of the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, what intentions are we, what intentions do we really have, right? <clears throat> what, what intentions do we really have to waste the skill, right? Or to waste the gift that he has given unto us. So yeah, I, I agree. The word minister, uh, not minister, the word stewards was probably a perfect term to use mm. in this scripture, right? It was, it was, and it, goes, and it goes back to, as you stated, like if we don't use it, and if you take, as I said, if you use it as the analogy of the seed, if you don't use it or you decide to water it a little bit each day and then forget to water it for a whole year, mm. that gift is like declined, yeah. just like a, that withers, mm -hmm. because it's got no substance to hold it, to help it grow. You can't yeah. repot it because it, it is, it's withered and it's dying. So it's the same principle. If you leave it for such a long time and don't nurture it and don't keep up that, that mm -hmm. gift to make it prosper, then it's going to wither at some point if you don't maintain it. It's like a plant. Mm, like it a is plant. a plant. If you neglect it, it will, it will die. <laughs> yeah. But the gift will be taken away from you. Taken away. Yeah, exactly yeah. that. Definitely. And also, I think we kind of have to look at the bigger picture as well understand that the God of Israel has given us all different gifts. Mm. But not only has he given us different gifts, he has a plan, right, on how he wants his his um, his kingdom his or his family to build, what, how he wants it to grow. So giving in everyone, um, it's almost like he's given your responsibility, you mm. understand? And your responsibility is to take care of that talent, use it, right to impact the nation right mm. to impact the people so whatever gift you have but you not using that gift that means there's a weakness here but if we're all applying the gifts remember we're using the word intentional right mm. if we're all using the correct intentions right because mm. we can use intentions but we could be using the wrong intentions or if we're all applying the correct intentions mm. then the God of Israel's house is going to grow because he's mm -hmm. ultimately he's given all of us different gifts. And if mm -hmm. all that, all them gifts are put together, then, you know, you, you, you could see the bigger picture. You could see the plan that the God of Israel has put in place in mm -hmm. order for his, his house to build. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah. I don't see that. I'd like to add on to that, um, Elder Kwame, because you stated about uh, like we've all got being given gifts. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's like we're working like a clock that has all the cogs 
if something is not working, if it's not turning, yeah. turning correctly, everything else will not turn and move them hands off the clock. Um, mm -hmm. And it's the same thing. And, and when she, as you were saying it, the there was a scripture regarding the prophecy about someone given the gifts of prophecy. But yeah, what I'm reading it right. Okay, right. <laughs> Romans Romans 12 it says oh, oh, oh. so we being many are one body in Christ and every one member of another having the gifts gifts differing according to the grace that is given unto us whether prophecy let us prophesy according to proportion of faith or ministry let us wait on our ministering or he that teacheth on teaching or he that exhorteth on exhortation he that giveth him sorry he that giveth let him do it with simplicity he that ruleth with diligence he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness let love be without dis dissimulation bloody bloody blah it goes on but that's your point that is exactly what you're trying to say yeah it was what i was trying to say and there was another scripture regarding prophecy where it talks about how it's it, prophecy will have no it has no effect if it's if the if you're prophesizing and nobody understands there's no one there to interpret interpret so it means that we have to work in sync everybody has their own gifts but we also have to work in sync because it was talked about how if someone prophesies and no one's there to interpret it then what good is the prophecy if no one's able to understand it <laughs> i cannot remember the scripture where it's where it is but yeah it talks about that so you've been given the gift but it also we have to work in unison together as the clogs cogs yeah. of the clock in order for us all to gain movement traction yeah. Great, yeah. Progress. yeah, great, great point. Romans twelve says it all. Romans twelve says it all because it describes us all as a nation, as one body. It says for all, for as we have many members in one body, so a body. Let's think of it, um, uh, like use our imagination, right, or figure figuratively, right. Every every member has, um, for we as members in one body, so our body has many different organs, oh, has yeah. limbs, have different operations, right. Yeah. Um, and all members have not the same office. So a hand hasn't got the same job as your nose or your mouth mm -hmm. or your feet, right? Unless you're an animal, right? So we being many are one body in Christ and everyone members one or one of another, one of another, essentially saying we all, with all our gifts, with all that the God of Israel has blessed us with, we have to use it together in order for us to operate as one body, to, in order for us to operate as one family. And even that, the fact that the God of Israel put us all together with different gifts and with different, I guess, I guess even outlooks and perspectives on life. That in itself was intentional, right? That in itself was intentional from our father, which is a beautiful thing. So I think, again, it goes back to the stewardship um, uh, word being used in, in PR, right? I think it's perfect. I think it's perfect. And the whole analogy you guys added is perfect. Really important. Um, okay. And funny enough, now that we're talking about talents, let's turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 25. And we're going to read from verse 14 up until verse 30. Up until verse 30. And I'll say it again, if you are liking what you're hearing or if you like what you hear any week from the Israelite Nation Worldwide Ministries, please like, comment, share, subscribe. Um, help us push this word to the four corners of the earth. That is super super important that's what we're charged with as israelites as you know blessed ones to know this truth we can only i guess help share and help help spread the word right so let's read matthew 25 from verse 14 and it states for the kingdom of heaven is a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods and unto one he gave five talents to another he gave two, and to the another he gave one. To every man, oh, I'm not even showing it. To every man, sorry, <laughs> according to his several ability, and straight away took his journey. Then he that receiveth the five talents went and traded with the same and made them five talents. So the one that had five talents went and done his business and flipped it, doubled it, right? And likewise, he that have received of two he also gained another two the same thing but he that received one went and digged in the earth and hid his lord's money he hid that talent he hid that gift that blessing he was given right and after a long time the lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them and so 
he that hath received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained besides them another five talents. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler of many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Verse 22. He, he also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Then he which hath received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee, sorry, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathered where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and I went and hid thy talents in the earth. Lo, there thou hast, sorry, there thou that hast thine, there thou hast, that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, thou wicked and slothful servant. Thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou ought therefore to put my money to the exchanges, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talents from him, and give it unto him which have ten talents. For unto every one that have that have shall be given, he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away, even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Okay. What are you guys' thoughts? Yeah, but so it goes by, it, go, it, talk, it, it talks about what we discussed earlier in regards to how getting something and building upon it. Um, you know, and not lie, and not lying, not letting it lie to waste. Um, so yeah, it. I mean, it's a really. Good, I mean, I've read this scripture so many times, and I and every time I see it, I mean, it. it you read it, 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 it just says so much in regards to our talents, the gifts that were being given by the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob so freely, and it states it here because He's given talents freely. He gave to His people freely, mm. and left it to them. And it also and it also shows shows the hearts of the people as well because if someone's given you something freely, and they don't and they haven't said anything to you about what to do with that talent, but you multiply it and say, look, I'm going to come back and finish some so time, and I'm going to see 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 what you've done with that talent. Basically, that's what he's done. He said, I'm going to give you this. I'm going to, I'm, like, I'm going to give you I'm going to give you five magic beans. I'm going to give you two magic beans. I'm going to see what you're doing with these beans. Yeah, see how you progress with these beans. And then one comes back and has like a whole whole vineyard because of what the beans have produced. Five beans have produced. Do you understand me? And the others have got a small little field and the other one's got none because we didn't bother planting the vineyard, um, the seed. He decided to yeah. just um, stick it in a pot yeah. <laughs> and restrict yeah, it to the for basically. Literally. I think, I think this is like the prime example of good intentions versus bad intentions. Um, well, maybe not prime, but a very good e example of good intentions versus bad intentions in the sense of the two that had, I guess, the five talents and the ten talents, they went away and, as you said, they they used their talents and, and built on it, grew it like a plant um, and, and used the blessings that they were given, right? And I can only imagine how, you know, the Lord must be when, you know, like I can only, for example, like if, if I gave my son like five pounds, and 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 he came back the next day and flipped it to ten pounds. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna think I'm raising the next Elon Musk or like Alan Sugar or someone like that, right? A proper business mind, right? Because he's growing. He's 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 using the resources he's got. He's using the cars that he's dealt, and and he's building on that, right? Yeah. Um, and that's the same for the, the 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 one with the two talents. Mm. But then that's the good intention, and and then the bad intention was the one that had the one talent and thought, you know, let me go and hide it and put it away and not use it and not grow it and not do anything uh, profitable with it. Because it says in verse 30, 
cast ye the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness, right? He's unprofitable. He's not helping the building of this nation. He's not, he's not using mm -hmm. his gifts or his talents to, to exalt my name, the God of Israel, right? To, to, to build his house, to do his works, right? So what, where, where were his intentions lying, right? They weren't anything positive. If we read the scripture, we don't see that he tried something positive and maybe his, 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 um, I don't know, his spirits were dampened because he realized it wasn't working. It wasn't like that. He had no intention of doing anything worthwhile with the blessing that he was given, right? And therefore, he was punished for it, right? He had the bad intentions and those with the good intentions were blessed. And that's exactly what the point we're trying to make is, right? You have good intentions, intentions that align with what the God of Israel wants to see. The God of Israel will bless you. He will bless us continually, right? Mm -hmm. You have the opposite of that. He will do the opposite of that. He will he will punish you, right? You don't want to build his house. You don't want to use the gifts and the talents you've been given. He will he he won't he won't bless you, right? Again, a two way transaction. You have to keep your end of the bargain, fulfill your end of the bargain for the God of Israel to fulfill His, because He's not obliged to. Yeah, I was going to say it goes about is the mindset of the people as well. Mm -hmm. If your if your heart and your mind, you do things as we said in in previous scriptures. Do do stuff, do things for the Lord with um with your whole heart, with every intentions. You know, this is what the five and the two did. The one had a whole other mindset because for him to turn around and say, "I knew that you were a hard man, reaping where you have not sold," you know, it, it's kind of like you can really see the he his whole mindset already in yeah. regards to, in regards to why he didn't. He it kind of like justified himself as to why. He did not multiply his talent. That the God of Israel turned around and called him, called him for who he is. You're slothful. You're lazy. You didn't do nothing. <laughs> you know, you're slothful. You're lazy. You didn't do nothing. You made up excuses as to what. Oh, you know what? You you you're, you're collecting where you never where you never done any work for it. Do you understand me? Yeah, great point. Yeah. <laughs> this this is the mindset of the people. So if you have, if they had the correct mindset, like the five and the two, they said, you know what? I'm going to try and do, I'm going to do something. I'm going to do something with this. I'm going to do something with this. You know, I've been given something. I've given the, the, the a, a platform. Let me see how high I can make this platform rise. Yeah. With him, he went. You know what? I'm. I, I'm. Why? What? Why? Why am I going to try and multiply it? That was his the mindset. You can see the mindset of mindset of what's happening here. Yeah. 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 You know. Yeah. Go for yeah. Yeah. Man, it goes back to what we said earlier, or what I said earlier. Um, we, we have to prove ourselves, right? Mm. At the end of the day, ultimately, we have to prove ourselves to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And how we do that is with our intentions. Do you see what I'm saying? How are you going to apply yourself? What are you going to do in order to, to, to lift up the God of Israel's name, to praise him, to give him glory? Because at the end of the day, that's the instructions that he's given us, right? Mm. By us keeping that and by applying, because there's a way, I, I just truly believe that there's a way that he wants us to apply ourselves and there's a way that he doesn't want us to apply ourselves. So just looking at this example, you can see that um, um, the men that took the talent that they had and multiplied those talents were rewarded for doing so. And the ones that didn't, they weren't rewarded, they were punished. Do you see mm. what I'm saying? So. There is a way that we, the God of Israel, there's almost like an expectation for how we have to be um, mm. as Israelites. You know, we have to prove ourselves. We mm. have to. We can't sit there thinking that, you know what, I'm an Israelite, so, you know, it's all good. No. Mm -hmm. you, you, what, 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 how are you going to praise the God of Israel? How are you going to put him first through all the things that you have to navigate through how do you put him first? Mm. You see what I'm saying? So, hundred percent, hundred percent, man. 100%. Mm -hmm. I was going to say as well. I was going to say as well that we need to everything in the scripture is everything in in the, in the King James Ver, um, Bible is relatable to today. So even if this, even we take this and apply it to today, you know, the talents you're given, the talents, you know, you're given that from when you like from, from young, you're given those talents. Collection day, when it comes to find out about what you've done with talents, will be at the end. <laughs> do you understand me? It's when you will show, okay, I gave you this. What did you do with it during your period of time on this earth? Do yeah. you understand me? There's going to be a collection at some point. 
in your life. See, everything is relatable to today. The only difference is, is that time as a way of us forgetting what we should be doing with those gifts that we're doing. And we tend to get, the world tends to have that, 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 that pull or that enticement, as you stated in the beginning, regarding that this is the time of year where things get darker and things like that. The world has that pull and that has that enticement that makes you not, 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 um, not, not um, forget about your talent, but distract you from your talent, I would say. This is correct word. Distract you from your talent. And before you know it, time has elapsed. Time has elapsed. Time has elapsed. You know, so mm -hmm. this happens today. You having your talents from your from 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 whichever age you were given your talent till collection day at the end is when mm -hmm. you need to produce what you did with your talents. And mm -hmm. and you know, only a god of Israel will know how many talents he gave you at that beginning. Whether you had the five, whether you had the two, whether you had three, whether you had ten, only he would know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But at the end, he will collect and ask that question. And and that's why I think this topic is very important to speak about now, considering the time that we're going into, because as you said, like it's, time has a way of making us forget. Um, and, you know, it's harder for us to forget when we're in our time of the year, when we have all of our feasts and all of our special times going on. Um, and it's harder. I mean, it's, yeah, it's harder for us to forget at that point. It's easy for us to forget when, you know, we... We don't have much going on because it's their time. Um, and you know what? Like this is like this is like the perfect time to have a discussion like this, to talk about temptation and, and how to resist it, to talk to talk about you know doing things for the God of Israel in the fullest of heart and with the fullest of intentions, because that is what's gonna keep your seat, that's what's gonna keep your your head in and around the children of Israel. This will that's what's gonna keep your head clear from all the temptation right and all these things are super super important and there's a point that i really wanted to make um in verse 24 and it says um then he which had received the one talent came and said mm -hmm. lord i knew that thou art a hard man reaping where thou has not sown and gathered where thou hast not strawed and that's that is an israelite that is an israelite right i know a lord God of abraham isaac and jacob that you will punish me if i do wrong I know, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that you will take my talents away and take my gifts away from me if I do not use them. But I'm still going to do it anyway, unfortunately, right? And that is, unfortunately, the nature of man. And, and as we said, we can easily say that from this scripture, the one that had the one talent, he had no good intentions because he did not try to do anything with the gifts, with the blessings, with the talents that he had, right? And 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 um, the other two, they, they they used their talents, right? They grew on their talents. They built on their talents and they used it to, to, to help build this house, right? They had good intentions. The one with the one, unfortunately, didn't have good intentions, right? He didn't have good intentions. And it's unfortunate. It's very unfortunate. It's like, as you say, stated, we put it, as we put it in today's context, it could be distractions of the world. It could be um, wasting of time, double-mindedness. It, it, a lot of things if you put it in today's context of what's happening in the world today and how this scenario may play out, it could be all those things that, you know what, time got the better of the person, which it doesn't. But, um, you know, it could be distractions, things in the world. Oh, you know what, I'm going to do it. I'll do it later. I have good intention to do it, but I'll do it later, thinking that you have control over time. No, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has control over time. You don't have control over time. So you can't turn around and say, I'm going to put it off till later you don't know when later is going to come yeah you don't know yeah you don't know when we have, it human beings. We have you that don't... problem all, every single day with you as being human beings we tend to think that we have control over time and we can put things off under mm. good intention you know what i'll do it later on i've got to go to my job job now oh i've got to go and do this now oh i've got to go and do some shopping now i've got to think i'll do that afterwards mm. who says you're going to have an afterwards yeah exactly <laughs> you don't know <laughs> sure. you know sometimes things happen because we sometimes we're given tests that that certain things will happen in our life to see whether we actually do it there and then or whether we're going to procrastinate and push it put it off and put it off and put it off putting off once okay you may may get away with it putting off yeah. time and time again yeah you know but yeah it's a matter of and a lot of people have a lot of talents and they decide to either use it for outside and not inside or yeah. You know, it's 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 not grown upon because they allow things of this world to distract them.
from growing what they could be. And plus, remember, we're living in a world world as well where where if you have something, if you have a a talent, a really good talent. It also goes back to the company that you keep when you talk. When we talked about family, have been um, having us being a family. Mm. It talks about the company you keep as well, because you'll find there'll be a lot of people out there that may not that are not your family that are out there that may try and stop you from growing your talent, may stop you from from enhancing it and being who you're supposed to be. And this is why it's so good the way the God of Israel has put us as a family, and that we all have to work together, being the one body, the one mind, and working as a cog. Because that keeps us in focus. But if you didn't have that focus, I mean, you hear so many things about people who have so much talent and then the company they keep robs them of that talent. Mm -hmm. They yeah. don't even try to nurture it because sure. of what being fed in their minds. Sure. But that's the beauty of the God of Israel is that he puts us in a family where we nurture each other, where we can water each other. When we're, where somebody's withering a little, we can pick them up and say, come on, come on. I know you're good at this. I know you're good at this. You know, and 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 put that that water back in them you know that there may be a little bit withering that's mm -hmm. the beauty of it yeah. mm -hmm. sorry about taking it slightly off <laughs> no, you're not, you're not. It's fine. <laughs> okay oh, Kwame, did you want to say something before i move on uh no 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 i thought i thought maria put it quite you know i think the 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 ultimately i, I mean just looking at the whole thing is it, kind of really understanding what our roles are, because mm. once we understand what our roles are, we know exactly what we have to do. You see what I'm saying? You know, because sometimes, yes, I, is there going to be times where we stray away from what we're supposed to do? Yeah, there is going to be those times. But mm. when you're, when you have that full intention, right? When you're intentional in how you go about doing things, even when you do slip up, you know what I mean? I, I feel that you make up for it when you when you can actually apply that intention, that 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 full intention of you know going back. Okay, so let me give you an example of what I'm saying. So we're talking about the man that had the five talent, and he doubled his talent, right? Mm. So imagine a man like that. Yeah, at some point in his life, he's gonna make like errors or mistakes or whatever. But mm. the point is that. The talent that he has, he's applying himself fully. Mm. Do, you, do you understand what I'm saying? Right? Rather than the person that's not even applying himself. Imagine he's not applying himself at all, right? Mm. What what use is he at all? Yeah. <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? You know, but when you have that that fire in you and that, that fire is burning within you, and and you you know, when when you have this opportunity, you want to build my I want to build my father's house. I want to, I want to. Um, um, I'm, my, my intention is I'm going to do the best that I can, you know what I mean, to do, to build my, my first house or to do this or to apply yourself or do that because you know deep down you have that understanding that, you know what, I serve a true and living God and I have this opportunity. Like Maria said, at one point you will be judged based on your work. Your works that you do is going to stand alone, right? So, um, it's important that you put your everything in that work because mm. half-hearted things, you will be judged based on half-hearted things that you did. But if you're yeah. putting full intention into things, then obviously, you know, that's that's just, the, that's the direction to go. And this is what the God of Israel wants to see you because you're going to benefit from that. He's going to bless you. You see what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And you will mm -hmm. benefit from that. Not only are you going to benefit, your brethren is going to benefit, the nation is going to benefit. You see what I'm saying? So um, mm -hmm. it's a win-win situation, man. You know, there's Definitely. a way that we have to apply ourselves. You know what I mean? Definitely. A double-minded a double -minded man is unstable in all these ways. Yeah, so I was going to add on to that. You know, we have to make sure our um, that anything that we do, we um, our actions are deliberate. They are, they are, as you said, intentional, deliberate. So whatever we do, we have to do it with with no, as you stated, with the double-mindedness, with no double-mindedness. It has to be deliberate. It has to be strong. It has to be um, with commitment and conviction. And that is yeah. the point of everything that we do. And um, that's why we, like with the laws, that's just commands, anything to do with the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, it has to be deliberate in our actions in keeping that. 
you know there has to there can't be no wavering there can't be no as you said double mindedness we have to be committed yeah, so there is amen. our actions have to be deliberate amen and you know what that segues us nicely into our, one of our last scriptures and i'm going to try and link the two so amen to what you just said um and i think it's very important to understand and remember as well that we as israelites under the, under the Israelite nation worldwide ministries have been given the ability, the, the right to call upon the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob through the Christ, right? And it's very, very important that we are very intentional with what we ask for as well and what we pray for, right? Because that that is something that, that's something that, you know, maybe goes under the radar in a sense of, you know, because we can lift our hands up whenever we want, we sometimes maybe forget that, you know, we have to be very careful for, or be ca very careful for what we ask for in what we ask for. And, and I guess in the hearts in which we are going up to the God of Israel with, right? So if you guys could please turn your Bibles to Philippians chapter four from verse, verse six. We're going to read from verse six. It states, be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And I find myself always rereading, so I'll reread this one again, right? Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God and the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus now for me personally what stands out is in verse 6 where it says uh but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be known unto God because you have to have a reason like you have to have a reason to pray to the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. But now that doesn't necessarily mean you need to have something to ask for, but you can also have something to thank him for, right? We always have something to thank him for, or even if we need to go to him for uh, consolation, like we need, you know, to, to call upon his name. We need someone to talk to. We have to have the intention when we pray to the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, because we're not robots, right? We're not, we're not put on this earth to call upon our father and to work, to build his house, for no reason with no real intention behind it we have to know why we do these things or why we're going to do these things right because we are people that need to have intention right mm -hmm. with intention comes your i guess your heart right when you when you have the fullest of intention in doing something your heart's also involved and therefore understanding is also involved and all those things need to be involved when you are serving the god of abraham the god of isaac and god of jacob when you're working for him when you're keeping his feasts when you're keeping his services anything like that to me, that's what stands out. I don't know what stands out for you guys specifically. I like this scripture. As you stated, like in verse six, verse six is so, so important. I'm going to read it, yeah, because I have to read this again because when I was reading it, when you were reading it quite um, two or three times, it started to sink more and more. It's like with the scriptures, the more you read it, even if you read the same verse over and over again, it kind of sinks in deeper and deeper and deeper. Every single time you read that one verse. And yeah. I just felt when you were reading that verse six, so with verse six, it says, be careful for nothing. Now that bit, that bit alone is what, is what, is what captured me. It captures me. Be careful for nothing. To be careful is to be cautious. It's actually not to be cautious for nothing. Be mm. not cautious for nothing. Meaning that if you're not gonna, if you don't need to be cautious for anything, it means that you're living right. You're doing what you're supposed to do. Do you understand me? Be cautious for nothing, but in everything by prayer, and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto god and i think that's so good because you stated about prayer mm. that we have to in everything we in everything we do everything by prayer whether as you stated whether that is giving thanks to the god of israel whether that is asking him for something or asking him for guidance or for something else Mm. it is done we have to make it very clear and it, again it states we have to make it very clear in our request <laughs> to our father it can't be a vague request it can't be a a round like um a, yeah, a riddle it, yeah it can't be a, around the bush and it can't be a riddle 
Be yeah. clear on what you're asking for. Be clear yeah. also in your thanksgiving to him, mm. you know? And it's and, and that's what I like about it, is it's saying that, you know what, make let your let your quest be made known unto him. So acknowledge him, say his name, make it be known, you're calling upon him, you know, and then with with what you want or what you of your thanks and your praises and of your um your requests. Make it be known unto him that you're calling him, that you're asking for him to acknowledge your prayer. And this is what you're praying about. Yeah, I do like that. Yeah. I do Amen. Like that. I think I think the scripture is very intentional, man. Um, when I think about it, because you know, the God of Israel is actually asking you to let him know what you want. You see what I'm saying? So he's asking you to explain to him what you want, right? That's very intentional because in order for you to let him know what you want, you have to be intentional in 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 letting him know what it is that you want and what you're going to do. You see what I'm saying? So by you telling him what you're going to do, he knows, you know, he knows what you want and what you're going to do, right? And what you're asking of him to help you with. So I think it kind of aligns with the lesson and, and the topic matter that we're talking about um, being intentional, because I think the God of Israel is, makes, is making it very clear that in, in our way, in the way, in our way of life, we have to be very intentional in the things that we do, you know, wherever it is us praying in order or we're letting him know what we want, or if it's a situation where we're actually dealing with a brethren, or if it's a situation where we're actually putting the God of Israel first, we're dealing with him. We have everything that we've taught today is about being um, intentional. You know, being committed to what you do. There's no half-hearted or being in the middle about what you do as an Israelite. As an Israelite, you have to be fully committed in what you do when it comes to serving the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob. Right? Mm -hmm. Don't hold back because it's almost it's almost like the way the God of Israel is trying to get us to behave or act. It's like you that you can't put a limit to it in the way you behave. Do you understand what I'm saying? Your commitment, there can't be a limit to your commitment. You can't half do it. Whatever it is in your heart, if you put, if you're doing something and you're, if it's coming from your heart, uh -huh. you, you're not gonna hold back in any shape or form. Do you, uh -huh. you understand what I'm saying? There's no limit to what you're gonna do. You're gonna do it properly. Do you see what I'm saying? If I'm doing something for my daughter, for example, right? Uh, and, and I'm doing it from a place, like, from my heart. Do you see uh, what I'm saying? Intentionally, there's no limit in how I'm going to, any, the, the best way that I can do it, I'm going to do it. And any uh, other ways that I can find to add to it, to make it a better experience, I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm not going to hold back. So it's almost like the God of Israel is kind of teaching us, with this lesson, is teaching us that, there's a way that we have to apply ourselves when it comes to being an Israelite. You see what I'm saying? In terms of how we commit ourselves to each other and how we even commit to him. You see what I'm saying? Because he's saying, be intentional. Like, tell me what it is that you want. Tell me what it is that you're asking for, mm -hmm. right? So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, I was just gonna add on to that as well. I was just gonna add on to that, because yeah. Um, as I said, I love that verse because it's stating, as you've already, already said as well, it's saying, don't play cautiously. Don't be cautious regarding what you have to say to me. As you, as you stated as well, Teacher Levi, don't beat around the bush. Don't play cautiously. Tell me what you want mm. directly, you know. Be, as you said, be deliberate. Be mm. intentional in what you want. Be precise. Be, be, uh, what's the word? <laughs> Got the word. Be straightforward. That's it. Be straightforward in what you think. Don't be like, don't play cautious with your prayer. Don't start like giving me all the all the all the whistles and bells, you know? Be straight yeah. with me. <coughs> be clear with me. You know? Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I like that. <coughs> I agree. I agree. I think with um, I guess with the lesson topic in general, I think I just think it's really important. Um 
one thing I like to say all the time is the scriptures, what we read week in, week out, daily, however, however often you read the Bible. Um, there's never an example of filler words. Nothing's been said just to fill the gap. Everything's been said with the fullest of intention. Um, with that being said, the scriptures are written with the fullest of intention and we're supposed to take the scriptures as they are because of the intention that they're written in. That we need to live our lives as Israelites with the fullest intention because we see what's written. We, we, we see the instructions that are given unto us and we need to understand what we're doing and therefore let our understanding lead our intentions and therefore do these things with the best intention. Um, I think that's super important in itself. And I think, you know, if we intend to do well in the eyes of the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and God of Jacob, he will see, he will see, he will see our works and he'll see how we do things with our hearts and he will bless us. But we have to take that step first. We have to intend to do these things with the best intentions at heart. We have to do these things with the fullest of understanding, right? We're going through a really, really hard time. Um, well, we're going to go through a hard time, right? Every year we go through a hard time. Um, and, and you know, we have to understand why we do these things and why these things are told to us, why right? These scriptures were written, why these words were used. We have to understand these things. And once we understand these things, you know, everything else will make sense. And I'm sure, more than sure, we'll navigate through these hard times very close to our father and we'll get through it. But we have to understand that we need to do these things with the best intentions at heart the best intentions in our mind um, and in our actions. That's what I think, really. Um, any closing remarks from you two before we we shy it? Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, I agree with everything you just said, Teacher Levi, <laughs> everything you just said, you know. Mm -hmm. um, we can, like, in, intentional living is simple. As a intentional living, att intentional living as an issue, like, is simple, but it's not easy. The instructions are there for how to for us how to 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 live our lives but it's not it's not as easy as we may think it is even though it's designed to be simple and i'm not sure if i'm articulating myself correctly you're making yet. a lot of sense you're definitely making sense it's not easy yeah, times yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's written down i mean the way it's presented is it seems it's easy to follow but because our of our environment and the land that we live in and the different factors it makes it harder mm. in some senses to do what we need to do to its full entirety even though we do our utmost best to do and try even, and do it in the full entirety had, yeah you're right and even when we had our own land we still struggled to to to, to you know yeah. follow it to its entire to in its entirety or we still struggle to we still made it hard is essentially what i'm trying to say yeah it's simple but we make it hard exactly we do make it hard but yeah I, I said um yeah we have to have deliberate actions when we are following the god of abraham isaac and jacob that means making those hard decisions when you're at in your job making them hard decisions when it comes to up, raising up your children when it, it we have to be deliberate in our choices knowing that this is the way we're supposed to do things to how the world wants to do things we have to be deliberate you know what i can't go to this I can't go to this event. I can't do that as my Sabbath. Can't do that as my new moon. Can't do that as uh, that's my God's day. We have to be deliberate in our choices and not compromise or not be double-minded, as we've said said throughout the lesson. We have to be strong in our commitment and in our convictions to what we do when it comes to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and mm -hmm. and in and in keeping the law, statutes, commandments, everything we're supposed to do. You know, we have to be intentionally. And we have to be intentional Israelites, if I'm saying that correctly. We have to be intentional Israelites in our decisions and everything that we do, because that's how we uphold our culture, our way of life, um, and serving our God, God to how He wants us to serve Him, not to how we want to serve Him. You know, on a on a part time basis, or you know, giving compromise or or, or delaying. That's not how we are. Um, that's not how it should be. So we do have to be strong in our actions, in our decision making when it comes to the outside world. Do you understand me? Because it's designed to make you, it's, as I said, the outside world is designed to make you, um, to make you doubt, to make you compromise. I should say it's the right word. Outside world is designed to make you compromise. Yeah, I just wanted to just add, I think, I think ultimately, right, we just, you know, have to understand that um you know 
there's a way that we have to apply ourselves um, in terms of how we, um, I think the key here is understanding, committing to our God. So I think you said something um, that's very, really important, Maria. And, and I wanted to touch on that point, like, you know, just being, um, because of the environment environment that we're, we're in, you know, there's, there's so much things um, that could prevent us from doing what we're doing if we're not fully committed. Do you understand what I'm saying? So that's why I feel that that, that intention, that intention that we have to apply is so important as an Israelite, because if we have that full conviction to apply those intentions, regardless of what's coming in our way, regardless of in the environment or what's trying to stop us from doing what we need to do, we're going to do it. You see what I'm saying? So it's really, really important for us to apply that 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 full intention, because otherwise, this is this is the difference between us putting the God of Israel first and putting maybe the world or other other people around us first. You see what I'm saying? Just it's just that intention, that commitment. You know what I mean? Um, amen. That's that's all I have to say with that, man. Amen. Uh, amen. 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 Okay. Well, that concludes our segment or our episode of Friday Night Bible Study here from the UK branch. Again, if you liked what you heard, if you, you know, like what you hear on a week to week basis, because we're not the only teachers you have, or you're blessed and you're graced to, you know, to hear the, the great words from our, you know, Supreme Council and even our young leaders over in headquarters. So if you like what you hear on a week to week basis, please do not forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. There's a phone number and a website url floating at the bottom bottom of this screen so if you are interested please feel feel free to contact that phone number and if you're interested in just seeing what we're about please use that email url and research us um thank you guys for for tuning in thank you elder kwame and maria for taking time out of your day and being a part of this this episode um please guys tune in for tomorrow's saturday service and please tune in for every other friday and saturday that we have to show and have to offer on the israel nation worldwide ministries youtube channel so with that guys thank you guys for tuning in and i would like to say peace peace, peace.